Watchmen, both one and all, wherever you may be. Come raise your voice in sorrow and mourn along with me. The death of our five darling sons fills Aaron with sad dismay. They died at Eden, Tabor on a clear November day. In fifty six, as all star sons wait war on England's queen, the call rang forth the silent three to all who love the green. The brave and true then left their homes and challenged England's might. As they helped the heroes of the North in the unequal fight. From Wexford came George Keegan with heart as true as steel. Along with brave young Palfour to man the barn of Young Craven came from Uri and Paul Smith from Armagh town. For twelve long months they battled with the forces of the crown. And Michael Waters of life at the age of fifty-four Was still as true to Roisin Duke as he was in days of yore In his cottage by the border he gave a friendly hand to them freedom fighters on the run With them he took his stand On the 11th of November I am sorry to relay My quarters and those brave young men Met with a cruel fate on the way to hit the foreign foe as they left the cottage door. A landmine lit, exploded, and they're gone forevermore. In Yuri there is sorrow, and in Arma City Grand. For two brave men who lost their lives in the fight to free their land. And loud and Wexford mourn to the death of their gallant sons. Old Ireland's lost five noble men who feared no British guns. Jeeva Karja, Coram Falsha Moor Higan O'Codge Coorta Shah. Tosha Tree Score August Tree Blina O Trigodge Eden Tubber. A big welcome to this commemorative event. It's 63 years since the Eden Tubber tragedy. Thank you for joining us for this unique online commemoration of the Eden Tubber martyrs. At this time of year, Republicans usually gather to commemorate these men and recommit ourselves to Irish unity. That's not possible this year because of the ongoing public health crisis. 2020 has been difficult for everyone and the onset of the coronavirus pandemic earlier this year, few could have predicted its effect on society. At this moment in time, we are, as an island, subject to public health restrictions which continue to alter the way we live our lives. These restrictions are frustrating but essential. Over 2,500 people on the island have died from this deadly virus. 
Hundreds more are currently being hospitalised, with many in serious condition. It is beyond essential that we continue to follow the public health guidelines. Wash your hands, keep your distance, wear a mask and limit your contacts. It would be remiss of me not to mention a comrade who he lost since last year's event. George Keegan's brother Stephen has sadly passed away. Stephen has been attending this commemoration for years and we remember his family and friends at this time. 63 years ago, five Republican activists gave their lives in the pursuit of Irish freedom, independence and unity. The tragedy at Eden Tubber, the loss of five brave men, was the single greatest loss to the Republican movement in Operation Harvest, the border campaign. Typically Republicans from North Loud, Newry, South Armagh, South Down and further afield meet at the site of Michael Waters' cottage each year to commemorate with pride and respect the Eden Tubber Martyrs. IRA volunteers Oliver Craven, Paul Smith, George Keegan and Patrick Powell and Republican activist Michael Waters lost their lives in a premature explosion on the night of Monday the 11th of November 1957. The operation they were planning was part of a series of acts by local Republicans operating in defiance of the Orange State and of partition itself. They played their part in the decade-old history of local resistance to occupation, discrimination, oppression and partition. Next year we'll witness the 100th anniversary of the enforced division of our country. This area has felt the effects of partition as keenly as any other part of our island. We know the damage the border has caused and we know how any reinforcing of that border will cause untold harm. We are, however, in the midst of a decade of opportunity. The debate on reunification of Ireland has intensified. We are seeing regular developments on the subject from groups and individuals from a range of backgrounds. As we commemorate five brave men who gave their lives for Irish unity, we recommit ourselves to the pursuit of Irish unity and national independence. It's time for us as Republicans to promote the benefits of Irish unity and broaden support for the same. A referendum on Irish unity is coming. It's time to get ready for it.
Irish men, both one and all, wherever you may be. Come raise your voice in sorrow, come raise your voice with me, for the death of five brave Irish men fills air and sad dismay. For they died at Eden Tubber on a dreary November day. In '56, when Ulster's sons raged war on England's queen, the call rang forth to all, to all who loved the green. The brave and true, they left their homes to challenge England might and to help the heroes of the north in the equal fight. From Wexford came George Keegan with his heart as true as steel, along with brave young Parrell to man the Barnagill. Young Craven came from New Smith from Brestbrook town, and for twelve long months they battled with the forces of the crown. Michael Waters from County Louth at the age of fifty-four was still as true to Rosnaboo as he was in days of yore. In his cottage by the border, he gave a friendly hand to the freedom fighters on the run. With them he took his stand. On the 11th of November, I'm sorry to relate, my quarters and his brave young friends, they met a cruel fate. On their way to hit the foreign foe, as they left the cottage door, a landmine exploded, and they're gone forevermore. In your town, there's sadness, and our city grand. For these brave young men who lost their lives in the fight to save our land. Loud and Wexford mourn to the death of their gallant sons. Old Ireland lost by brave young men who feared no British gun. Old Ireland lost by brave young men who feared no British gun. Akarja, like almost every aspect of our lives this year, we've been forced by COVID-19 to do things differently. Today, we commemorate the Eden Tubber Martyrs, not as a gathering of proud and solemn Republicans as we typically do, but online. Nevertheless, we Republicans remember, as we have done every year at this time, with pride and dignity, the Eden Tubber Martyrs. These five brave Republicans, Michael Waters, Paul Smith, Oliver Craven, Patrick Parle and George Keegan, gave their lives in the early hours of Monday 11th of November 1957, 63 years ago. They gave their lives in the pursuit of Irish freedom, national independence and unity. The five men from four counties, Down, Louth, Armagh and Waterford, were drawn to a small cottage at Eden Tubber by a burning desire to see Irish freedom and unity and to defy oppression, injustice and occupation. They were soldiers fighting in Operation Harvest, an IRA campaign waged between 1956 and 1962, popularly known as the Border Campaign. Operation Harvest represented another phase of struggle against British interference in Ireland and was part of the resistance and opposition to partition, the fourth division of our island. This area of North Louth, South Armagh and South Down has been a focal point of various campaigns against partition 
since its imposition almost 100 years ago. Like the men and women of the 4th Northern Division before them, and the volunteers of the IRA in the most fe- recent phase of struggle, the Eden Tubber martyrs recognised the strategic importance of this region. This area has long been littered with checkpoints, watchtowers and military bases. The people here felt the worst excesses of oppression and occupation and defiantly delivered sustained and concentrated resistance to the same. Now, as we approach the 100th year of partition, the watchtower and watchtowers and military installations are thankfully gone. The hard border they enforced and maintained is gone too. As we mark the centenary of partition, it is important to measure the progress we have made. Progress that has been strongly felt here in this area. We must take no steps backwards, as Moria Drum said. Our steps must be onward. 100 years ago, Ireland was at war. Republicans fought the British military establishment the length and breadth of this island. Throughout October, November and December, we will or have acknowledged the centenary of some of the most defining and seminal moments of our recent history. These will mark the 100th anniversary of the Kilmichael ambush, Croke Park's Bloody Sunday, the death on hunger strike of Terence McSweeney and the Government of Ireland Act. These events, tragic or seminal, set the stage for the truce, the treaty and the British imposed division of our island, the scars of which are still keenly felt today. A few miles up the road from Eden Tubber at the Egyptian Arch on December 12, 1920, almost 100 years ago, a unit of the 4th Northern Division ambushed a British Army unit on its way to counter an attack in Kamla. As a result of this skirmish, three IRA volunteers, William Canning, Peter Shields and John Francis O'Hare would lose their lives. These men would be the first to feature on Neary's Roll of Honour and would contribute to decades of local resistance to occupation, oppression and discrimination. In the 100 years since the Egyptian arch ambush and in the 63 years since the loss of the Eden Tubber martyrs, Ireland has transformed almost beyond recognition. As we enter into the 100th year of the so-called Union with Britain, it is clear to see that it has never been weaker. Movements in favour of independence and national democracy are growing at pace and strength across these islands. Here in Ireland, our own debate on Irish unity is intensifying day by day. We are witnessing daily interventions on the subject of reunification. We're entering into a decade of unparalleled opportunity. It is clear to see that momentum towards Irish unity is growing. We have seen people from all backgrounds acknowledge the reality of a rapidly growing discussion on our constitutional future. In the middle of last month, we saw the Taoiseach elaborate on his shared island unit. Whilst the unit falls far short of what Sinn Féin would do in government and of what the Irish government should be doing to prepare for unity, it is a welcome development. All proponents of Irish unity should engage with this unit going forward. It is disappointing, however, that there is no reference to Irish unity in the programme for government in the South, and even more disappointing that the Taoiseach Michal Martin failed to address Irish unity in his shared island address. Let's be clear, no longer is the goal of a united Ireland seen as an aspiration. It is now within our reach, it is a winnable and doable project, and is absolutely necessary for the future prosperity of everyone who calls this island home. Miho Martin's unit has been prompted by the phenomenal electoral success of Sinn Féin in the course of this year. As a result of our successes, every county in Ireland is now represented by a Sinn Féin TD or MLA. Sinn Féin is in government in the north and leads the opposition in the south. This all-Ireland team will be formidable in holding the southern government to account, promoting the change that is needed delivering for our communities and standing up for workers and families across the island. Our all-island team will also be a relentless voice for Irish unity. The twin perils of COVID-19 and Brexit have crystallised the folly and utter unsustainability of the partition of our island. Opinion polls and exit polls in recent years have confirmed one trend, increased support for Irish unity. As we approach the 100th anniversary of partition, it makes absolute sense to plan and prepare for Irish unity. 
it's important that these plans are as broad and democratic as possible. They must be accessible to all who call this island home, which will include unionists. We cannot unify the people of this island while retaining partition and the division of the border. The Irish government must harness the growing momentum for Irish unity. They must convene an All-Ireland Citizens' Assembly to plan for constitutional change. We too have our part to play. Change is happening, but it is not inevitable. We must promote the benefits of Irish unity and allay the fears held by some about ending the union with Britain. A united Ireland makes sense. It makes sense culturally, politically, environmentally and economically. As we stir into the abyss of a possible no-deal Brexit, we are reminded that unity provides the ultimate solution to Britain's Tory Brexit mess. Writing in 1957, months before the Eden Tubber martyrs lost their lives, the United Irishman newspaper stated, Now is the time for Irish men and women, at home and abroad, to sink their differences and gather around the young men and women in their struggle today for Irish freedom. That call is as relevant today as it was 63 years ago. It's time to play, plan for constitutional change. It's time to discuss the details, allay the fears and convince the sceptics. It's time for Irish unity. Music